What do you get when you take an international school for librarians and combine media specialist skills, research skills, and marketing skills, and revamp and former literary magazine? I'll tell you what you get. You get six, then 12, now 47 students that are interested in bringing literature, art, and journalism to the world. We took a small core of students interested in revamping their literary magazine from what was called Reflections to now calling it Repetino. This became our literary magazine. And expanding outside of the literary magazine, we thought, why can't we ask for art from all over the world? Denmark, cover illustrations from France, and of course, individuals from our own Mexico City who wrote and painted, as well as photographs from Japan. The result was a project-based interdisciplinary magazine that went to Columbia Scholastic Press Association for Mexico City every year in March, where we not only were able to be recognized as a silver certificate for the first time out, but on our own campus, we were recognized as one of the most active clubs in 2011, 2012. Using the skills of a media specialist and librarian and the combined efforts of skilled librarians and media specialists to impact interdisciplinary standards, you get a fun project-based initiative that actually reaches all over the world. Teaching international in an international school, how do you do that? Training the staff to do faculty applications for our own magazine, PRing to different artists all over the world and marking the magazine became another interdisciplinary skill students were able to learn combined with social networks such as Twitter, Tumblr, Gmail, Hangouts, and Skype, just to mention a few to get the articles to come flowing in to the Repetino magazine. We're going to let your specialists today, which are some of the artists that are featured in our magazine, tell you how this happened, how it grew from six staff and what they particularly see as the importance of art. Mm -hmm. Through their messages, you will see the different standards that come out from what can be used as a media specialist and librarian in your own school to create your own project-based initiative. My name is Harry Brake, one of three librarians at American School Foundation who every day challenges the limits and pushes what students can conceive as a library specialist and what we can do with those skills for the general public. Welcome, and we're excited to have you see how our project-based initiative of Repetino has been established. <sighs> you. 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 Probably don't know what Repentino is, but I'm here to tell you all about it. Repentino is ASF's literary magazine. It contains creative works that were submitted by people all over the world. As you can see, it's pretty cool. Whether you are a writer, an artist, photographer, or simply creative, this is for you. Everyone, my name is Hai Chum, 21 years old. Hey everyone, my name is David Yu. Hi, my name is Alexandria Smith. I wrote this poem because Hi there, my name is Jack Little. Hello, my name is Alexander Salomon, but my artistic name is Namalas. As the Lit Mag is awesome! Good everyone, my name is Hai Chum, 21 years old. I was born and live in CMBF City, Cambodia. Now, I would love telling all of you about my art experience. I really love color of art, but I want a way of art. I don't know how to do and what artists mean. By the way, I could afford to find art school. My initial thought is to start spending some time to make some painting. I can imagine how I feel. Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I sad, or sometimes refer to unreal nature and sometimes about my histories. They are absolutely different from the market because I want to be my own world painting. Even though they don't look good, but those are what I want to do. And I expect that many people like it. Unfortunately, many Cambodian people don't understand better what I was doing. They don't accept what my ass was meaning. And some people don't think so that look like my real art. So it was not recognized that you were painting and discriminated at the time. I give up immediately. I still remember when I was junior high school, I changed making painting to cutting sticker. It 
was not popular that much too. Until someday, I eventually was recommend to go to small art school that was found by her own finance Japanese art teacher Tomoko Kasahara to provide free art education to Cambodia children. The school is willing, encouraging, and support what they want to study. I think I came to small art school uh, almost three years, and I was making many stuff of painting, including paper cutting so far. I'm talking about these three artworks team. The small one is titled is Astra Dancer and the two big is what is performance descendant and the other one is Stampede Art I would like to focus to the next of new generation in the family that will be about a performer actually. I don't mention whether their son, doctor, grand children, great grand children or whoever in the family but there are some stories about uniforms and performance art they are quite stranger normally the performance must to wear traditional uniform because of the modern world in the 21st of century I would love to imagine making fashion uniform to the performer one more thing is the performance art it is unusual action when performers were never done so far because I do believe that will be done a new world record by performers someday. Finally, I will send all of the best wish to all of you who spend your valuable time watching my video profile. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Alexander Salomon, but my artistic name is Namalas. I am from Puerto Rico, but I'm currently living in Florida. I'm a freshman in Riverview High School, and I'm really enjoying it. To give you a little background of my piece that I submitted on Repentino, I was trying to make a strong character that was also very bright and fun, very colorful, and strong. I just wanted to make a strong persona. I was exploring new methods in my art. I was trying out to put watercolors on my drawings and I started doing digital art too at the time and that was my starting point that was my trial drawing on it to explain the relationship with literature and art I would think that these two can't function without each other they they complement each other to make you have the best understanding you can visually and mentally if I had to indicate one of my art influence, it would probably be a Colombian artist. His name is Ricardo Cifuentes. Um, he really inspires me. He makes watercolor portraits. They're, the colors that he uses, the tones, and the preciseness of every single person that he draws. And I love his portraits a lot. And he's a very good friend of mine too now. If I could give two pieces of advice to artists, it would be to stay true to yourself, do not change for others, just be you, because that's all you have. And also, be proud of your art. I think that's always been something really important to me. I've, I've always tried to not second guess myself. I try to be as confident as possible about it. Never be ashamed of the beauty that you create, because art is your thing. Whether it's writing, or drawing, all kinds of art are your thing. And just make it unique. Anyways, goodbye now! Hey everyone, my name is David Yu, I'm 17 and I grew up in Taipei. I'm about to attend NYU Stern where I'll be majoring in business and political economy and minoring in psychology and global visual arts. So I've been doing freelance photography for the past couple of years for the purpose of my IBHL visual arts class in high school and I was first exposed to this art when I took digital photography in ninth grade and that's the first time that I actually started playing with a professional camera. Um, then the later years, even though I didn't take any more photography classes, I still did take photos on the side and I would always just call up my friends and go on a photo shoot adventure where we would explore unique places in Taipei that looked exotic to us and try out different artistic themes such as um, animalism or just contrasting bright colors, simple ideas like that and we just really like to play around with it. 
So out of my three pieces that are exhibited here, um, Ambitions is my first piece that I completed um, in the summer of 2012. It's a portrait of my brother in flames in which out of the flames you can kind of see a frustrated expression through the lift of the eyebrow there. And the inspiration behind this work was the book Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky that I read in my AP English Literature class that year. The book is a profoundly intellectual story that challenges how you perceive a crime. And in the story, the protagonist called Raskolnikov spends the entire timeline discussing casuistry, which is the act of um, changing one's morals in order to fit a situation. And the plot revolves around the incident when Raskolnikov kills a pawnbroker because she is good for nothing and he's, he believes that he's doing the world a favor by killing her. Um, but the entire story is Raskolnikov battling between himself about what's right or wrong, and he finally decides to kill her because he thinks that it's the only option out there. Overall, this is kind of linked to the picture of my brother here in the sense that he's appearing to be very, very frustrated in life. And no matter what he does, he's still trapped in this mirage of trouble. The next photo here is entitled Vietnam, which I took while traveling with my family to Hanoi in December of 2012. During the trip, I realized a really, really surprising fact to me, and that is how women are the people who run the country. Um, no matter where you go, it's always the women who are down there fishing, it's always women who are rowing the boats, they're always the ones doing the hard labor. And I think this picture really captures the essence of this reality in Vietnam, because um, both with the main woman in the black jacket and also the old lady in the back pushing the garbage trolley. The final picture here is titled Cold Embrace, and it's a self-portrait that I did early in 2013 this year. Um, the reality behind this photo is that I really, really wanted a self-portrait to put in my IB art exhibition. So I told, I asked my friend to take this photo for me, but I did try and twist some kind of inspirational artistic element into this because, I mean, that's what that's what art is all about, right? So the message behind this photo is that um, there's a profound correlation between nature and our, our and our lives today because in every aspect, nature is always going to be a part of who we are today. So that concludes my introduction of myself as an artist. And one final word of advice for all the artists out there, I know I'm no Jerry Yulesman or Tony Duran, but for my experiences, I think that the best way to be inspired is to go out and look around more often. And I think you'll really be surprised with what you come up with. Thank you. Uh, well, I wrote this poem because I think that there's always an experience or a person or a situation that marked us negatively and we that pain we felt is still within us, even though we don't feel it anymore. It became a scar. And I compare it to a monster that, a hunt, that is haunting this person in a mental hospital because other people don't see everything she's been through and what, she, what that scar is doing to her. So, I mean... All I have to say is, if you like, if you have that scar, just accept it, accept your monsters, and keep going. Hi, my name is Alexandria Smith. I'm one of the contributors to Repentino Magazine, and um, I'm a, a junior college student. I go to a small Catholic university in northeastern Pennsylvania called Misericordia and uh, my focus is in mass communications. A little background regarding the influence on some of my poems uh, that were submitted. Um, the first one was Frostlight, and the second one was called Dead Eye. Um, both poems actually dealt with the same subject, and myself you know, trying to, to deal with it and deal with the emotions that would arise over a, about a year-long period. Um, so it was over a, the ending of a relationship that I had sometimes valued more than myself. So when it ended, you can imagine <laughs> the kinds of feelings that I must have felt when you read these poems. Um, however, the first one, Frostlight, specifically dealt with this idea that, you know, when you really love someone and they leave and you really feel that this person was kind of meant to be with you. You, you. you struggle with the idea, well, if this person couldn't love me, could anyone? Is that even possible? Is it even possible for someone to feel that same way about you again? The second piece, Dead Eye, uh, definitely a lot more, more aggressive, specifically dealt with 
the the mixture of anger that I felt at the ending of that relationship as if you know it's so easy to walk away from someone as if it's so easy to say I'm I don't want to do this anymore thinking like oh great you know I spent all this time with you and and I felt so much for you and you kind of walked out as far as the brief look between uh, the connection between art and literature definitely a very strong connection especially with the, the literary tools that can be used um, when writing you can paint a picture as easily with words as you can with paint or, or other art artistic um, artistic means but writing definitely takes on a life of its own your word your word cho choices is very important and depending on what word you choose can affect the way that your piece is perceived so definitely there's a very strong connection between between art and literature. Regardless of what medium you choose to express yourself, the underlying importance is with that expression. And if I had three pieces of advice to give up to um, artists to succeed, despite of their art study, that would definitely be um, be open to the kinds of experiences that you can have in your life. Because a lot of the things that I've written about or that I've, I've done, I've come... I've come in contact with different people and they showed me a lot of different perspectives. Also, um, don't be afraid of what you feel because if you're afraid of what you're feeling, you're not able to truly grasp it and express it in a way that is both, you know, articulate and sound. And the third, um, don't be afraid to live your life. Don't be afraid to do any, all the things that you you've wanted and all the things that you've maybe never considered before because from experience becomes good writing and good uh, good art as far as the top two influences in in poetry and in my particular field of interest um, I'd have to say that Jean Anne Verlee is a magnificent poet and her writing does inspire me to not only be articulate, but be articulate in a way that is easily understood. She uses a lot of aggressive um, slurs and, and swear words, and sometimes in writing, that is the most appropriate word to use to capture a feeling. So she's very, she's very much informal, and I definitely appreciate that kind of writing. Other influence in my field of interest, I really enjoy Leonard Cohen. I'm a really big fan of the um, similes and metaphors. So comparing different body parts to other life functions, I, I really appreciate that. Um, like the lungs to to paper bags, that kind of thing. So I guess that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed my interview. Hi there, my name is Jack Little. I'm a British poet based here in Mexico City. And the poem that I've written that's been selected for Repentino is part of a selection of poems all about Tlalpan. And they're inspired by my wife's grandfather and the wonderful stories he tells us every weekend about the flower sellers, the farmers, and what life was like growing up here. Thanks very much. All the best.